From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Killer at Large. Africa is a violent place, used to the savageries of man and of beast. And yet the entire continent was swept by a wave of shock when the horrifying news came over the Johannesburg radio. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news flash. Judge Harley Cartwright, his wife and two of their children were murdered in their sleep sometime between 11 o'clock last night and 7 this morning. Their bodies were discovered by Miss Brunhilde Grison, a servant who reported for work at that hour. No further details are available at this time. Judge Cartwright, it hardly seems possible. What a tremendous loss to the country. He was a right one, he was. It's a horrible thing. I feel as though I'd lost my best friend. And thousands in Africa must feel the same way. His whole family. How terrible. Yes, Africa was in mourning for the one man who had done more than any other to bring equal justice for all to the dark continent. And on the black day of his murder, people spoke of his greatness. They told, for example, of how he'd once sentenced his own son, not a victim of the mass killing, for a minor infraction of the law, and then dismissed a similar case against a native, on the grounds that his son knew better and the native did not. Yes, Africa's greatest exponent of justice was dead, and the people wept. Then on the heels of their bereavement came anger and indignation. Forty-eight hours and there is no clue to the killer. Unless I have something to report by tonight, there's apt to be serious trouble here. Yeah, we must have action, not words. We must find out who killed White Buona. I'd say it's high time the police made some headway in this case. It's a terrible tragedy. The police are doing absolutely nothing. Well, Captain Lawrence? I haven't been able to find a single clue, Governor. The servant who discovered the bodies is a woman of excellent character... Apparently, no one else was even near the house. And Judge Cartwright was the most beloved man in Africa. Even the men he sentenced seemed to admire him. So far as I've been able to learn, he hadn't a single enemy. See here, Lawrence. The murder of Judge Cartwright, his wife, and two of their children prove that he had an enemy. And I want the man caught. All of Africa is screaming for his blood. And unless we produce results, we'll have a political upheaval unparalleled in our history. Oh, pardon me, Governor. I can't see anyone now. But I'm in your outer office, and I've come over a thousand miles to see you. Carson? That's right, and I dislike these mechanical contrivances. Perhaps you could spare me just a moment in person? Of course. Come in. Uh, Governor, my heart's been heavy. I think now I can attack the problem with renewed strength. I sincerely hope so, Lawrence. Carson, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, my friend. Carson, uh, meet Governor Murdoch. I've heard a great deal about you, Tarzan, and I hope Captain Lawrence will be able to enlist your help. I'll run along now. Keep in constant touch with me, Lawrence. I'll do that, sir. Happy to have met you, Tarzan. Goodbye, Governor. Well, sit down, won't you? What, uh, what did the Governor mean that he hopes you can enlist my help? I'm faced with the toughest case of my entire career, Tarzan. There's been a mass killing, and I haven't been able to find a clue. No footprints or other tangible evidence. No motives. No leads whatsoever. You're referring to the death of Judge Cartwright and his family? You know about it? Oh, the jungle drums transmit information faster than the radios and telegraphs of civilized lands. Oh, yes, yes, I'd forgotten. Tarzan, I need your help more than I've ever needed it before. I don't require any urging, Captain Lawrence. Every man of the jungle knows what Judge Cartwright meant to Africa. If it's within my power, I'll find the man who killed him. And when I do, I hope I shall be able to restrain myself from taking his punishment into my own two hands. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment to our story of Killer at Large. But despite Tarzan's help, no clue was found to the strange murder of Judge Cartwright and three members of his family. The days moved on. The temper of Africa's people grew. 
And now the sorrow of the great man's death was lost in a tumult of anger. It's a national disgrace and something ought to be done about it. I see it. Remove the governor from office and get a new aid of the police. Captain Lawrence is the one to blame. He's responsible for muddling the case. We need a whole new police system. They ought to remove Lawrence. Yes, Captain Lawrence was to be the scapegoat. Tarzan's friend was now to absorb the misdirected anger of the multitude. The people thirsted for revenge against the killer of the beloved Judge Cartwright, but since not even a suspect could be discovered, they'd find some satisfaction in having the police captain stripped of rank. Captain Lawrence was deeply worried, but not about his own position nor the anger of the people. If the perpetrator of this crime escapes unpunished, it will set the country back 20 years. I know you've worked hard to bring law and order to Africa, Captain Lawrence. Well, I'm only one man, Tarzan. Thousands have devoted their lives to making this a civilized country. Judge Cartwright, perhaps more than any other. It's ironic that his death may be the beginning of a new wave of crime here. Captain Lawrence, I think we've ignored one large possibility. No, what's that? The criminals Judge Cartwright was forced to sentence to prison. But no prisoners escaped recently. I told you that. Yes, I know you did, but we haven't uncovered a clue in any other direction. Well, that's certainly true. Where where are these men imprisoned? In the national prison on Hangman's Island. There's no sense trying to question any of them. There are a bloodthirsty lot of hardened criminals who wouldn't part with a word of information if they could. Not to a police officer, perhaps, but they they might confide in a fellow prisoner. To a fellow prisoner, yes, but... Tarzan, you're not suggesting... With a little make-up, I should be perfectly safe, but even without a disguise, I doubt that any of my fellow prisoners would recognize me. You've been responsible for sending several of them to their well-deserved imprisonment. If they found out you were there as a spy, your life wouldn't be worth tuppence. Oh, surely they have guards to prevent any outbreak of violence? There aren't nearly enough guards, and I'll have to admit that the warden there is a very poor disciplinarian. He's held his job by a narrow thread for several years now. It's suicide for you to go there, Tarzan. Africa's greatest friend is dead, Captain. And my life compared to his has little value. But I I will need your help in being sentenced to Hangman's Island. Well, I can arrange it, Tarzan. And I'll be doing so with a heart that's full of dread. beasts. One more word and you have no meals tomorrow. In here, you. And I hope you enjoy your company. Oh, we've got to share this filthy rat trap with another blighter now, eh? Put another one in here, Captain. Come on, you. The empty bunk is over in my corner. The light's a little bad this hour, but if you keep close to me, you won't stumble. Thanks. How many men in this cell? Six. No rum lot they are, too, I can tell you that. Well, here we are, matey. Your bunk's just above. <laughs> See what I mean? They won't none of them talk to me anyway. They think they're too good for me because they're all in for murder. I'm only in for armed robbery. I see. If I try to call to some pals in the next cell, he takes my rations away, he does. The warden? Yes, Him. The warden. I heard he wasn't so bad. Oh, he didn't used to be. Up until Ross got away. Oh? Someone escaped? Oh, you're interested, eh? You think maybe you can escape? Uh, maybe. Well, you can forget about that in a hurry, chum. During the last ten days, we ain't even allowed out of our cells. So rum how to do, I can tell you that. This Ross escaped ten days ago? I said that, didn't I? Seems to me you're getting mighty Did he enough. say why he wanted to escape? Or was he out for revenge against someone? Well, he didn't say. It was a quiet one, he was. Which is plain you're not. If I thought for a moment you was... What are you doing? I'm just lighting a match so that I can see where my bunk is. How come they let you hold on your matches? And how come you're looking for your bunk over by the window? I told you it was right overhead. I couldn't see where... Wait a minute. Now I'm beginning to understand. So that's why you're willing to talk to the likes of me. You're a spy, that's what you are. You've been popping me for information. Oh, no, no, you're mistaken. Man, the new prisoner's a spy. He's a spy. In the inky blackness of the prison cell, the enraged convicts closed in on Tarzan. The odds were staggering, and these were men who knew every trick of the game. One of the men managed to get behind Tarzan, and the lord of the jungle tripped as he stepped backward to avoid a fresh assault. Now the men were on top of him like vultures swooping down on a dying beast. 
But suddenly the air was rent with machine gun fire. Captain Lawrence had seen the flickering match in the window and had commandeered the prison guards. Now the convicts untangled themselves and shrunk to the sides of the unkempt cell. They remained there as Captain Lawrence entered and escorted the new prisoner to the office of the warden. What is the meaning of this action, Captain Lawrence? I'll tell you what it means. It means that Tarzan found out what he came here to find out. Tarzan? Yes, I learned that a prisoner escaped from here ten days ago, the day before Judge Cartwright and his family were killed. Is that true, Skyler? Yeah, it is true. Then why wasn't it reported? I... I must have overlooked it. That's a lie, and you know it. What are you covering up? Nothing. Nothing, I swear it. I... I was afraid if the news got out, it would mean my job. It will. But we have other matters to take care of first. Tarzan, how much did you find out? The man's name is Ross. That's all I learned. But I'm not through with my fellow prisoners yet. And I'm not through with the warden. Before we leave here, we'll have the complete story. The identity of the man who killed Judge Cartwright was learned early this morning. He's George Ross, 22, an escaped convict who believed Judge Cartwright had dealt too harshly with him. Ross is described as good-looking, soft-spoken, and deceivingly gentle of manner. He is five feet, eight inches tall, has blue eyes and brown hair. When last seen, he wore a prison uniform and was armed with a tommy gun he had wrested from a prison guard. And now we bring you Captain Stanley Lawrence of the governmental police speaking from Hangman's Island. Come in, Captain Lawrence. This is Captain Lawrence. The record of George Ross, although he's only 22, is long and bloody. He knows that his capture will mean life imprisonment or death, and it is believed that he'll do anything to prevent that capture. He's armed and he's dangerous. His whereabouts at this time are unknown, but all of Africa is advised to keep a sharp lookout for this killer, who is still at large. In just a moment, we'll learn the fate of Tarzan when he enters the jungle in pursuit of the killer. Now the identity of the killer was known. His description was telegraphed to every city in Africa. It was relayed to native villages by the talking drums of the jungle. It was sent overseas to every civilized country on the globe. And the greatest manhunt that Africa had ever known was set in motion. I expect every single police officer to disregard the clock. You to stay on duty 24 hours a day until the man is apprehended. Spread through jungle. Find man. Capture Makawa, who killed black man's friend. Not stop until capture killer of great white warner. There's 50 of us prisoners wants to volunteer, sir. Even though Judge Cartwright sentenced most of us, we know he was a square one, and we'd like a go at the blight and we've done him in. You can send us out with guards if you like, but we'll find him for you, we will. I'm calling for a vigilante committee of a thousand men, and on behalf of the government, I'm offering a thousand pounds reward. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we'll have plenty of help in catching Ross. Help? We won't have a hand in it at all if we continue to sit in my office. Well, be patient, Captain Lawrence. Patient? Tarzan, I can't understand you. Half the men in the country are beating through the bush and you refuse to start out. Why, he may be thousands of miles from here by this time. In what direction? Eh? It's pointless to go running into the jungle until we have some idea of where he is. Well, we know he started toward Kigoma. Yes, ten days ago. Don't forget this, he may have heard that radio report too, and if he did, he hurried away from that section as fast as he could. He may be traveling in any one of a dozen different directions. Yes, that's true, but... Oh, just a minute until I take this down. Those... Poor boys. What's happened? Three of my men killed, shot down in cold blood. With a machine gun? Yes. Where did it take place, Captain Lawrence, and when? Near Limfonis, early this morning. Oh, it's a great price to pay for information, but now we know where he was this morning. I'm ready to leave now, Captain Lawrence. I hope we can arrive before Ross claims more lives. <laughs> What is it? Carrion birds circling just ahead. Might mean a dying animal or a dying man. Perhaps Ross has found another victim. Hurry, Captain Lawrence. It is a man. Where? Just ahead, behind that clump of bushes. Uh, you're right. Face down on the wet clay. Machine gun. It's more of Ross's work, all right. Uh, oh, oh. Doesn't he? He's still alive. Just about. Let's see if we can turn him over gently. Got it. Oh. 
It's Warden Skyler. Warden of Hangman's Island. Mm-hmm. Warden. Yeah? It's Tarzan and Captain Lawrence. We, we may still be able to save you, sir. No. Don't bother with me. Go on. Capture him. He's insane. Ross? Yeah. I, I came after him. I thought uh, maybe I could undo the wrong I did. But I... Uh... Dead. He turned out to be a brave man after all. <laughs> what a way to prove it. There's a machine gun fire. Yeah, several miles from here. Only a few miles. We're close on his trail, Tarzan. No, not close enough. I'm going on without you, Captain Lawrence. I have to make the greatest speed I can. Well, good luck, Tarzan. And don't take too many chances. Another victim. Oh, only hadn't got that ten-day head start. Hello, Marty. You. That's right, Jim. And you're just in time to see your old cellmate turn up his toes. Well, perhaps I can get you to some native village where they can... Knock it. I know I'm done in. But I ain't afraid to die. I've done my best to do the right thing before I kicked in. And I almost had him, I did. Ross? Yes, Ross. The dirty swine. Killing poor innocent people just because of a fancy wrong what he claimed against the judge. May he rest in peace. Now hop it and catch up with him. But I, I, I can't leave you here to die alone. alone. or in a crowd. What's the difference? I'll die easier, I will. If I know you're holding his trail. Now make tracks, mighty. Make tracks. Another day has passed, and George Ross is still at large. This, the 13th day since his murder of Judge Cartwright, was marked by the death of two more men. One a member of a citizen's committee from Point Noir, the other unidentified. Apparently, Ross still has a supply of ammunition, for the latter victim had been machine gunned beyond recognition. Ross's knowledge of the jungle and his great cunning continued to amaze the police. Even Tarzan, a man unsurpassed in his mastery of the Congo, has been unable to sight the killer. The trail of death that Ross has left in his wake makes it plain that he is now somewhere in the southwest portion of French Equatorial Africa. But heavy rains, which have been sweeping the district for the past several days, makes his eventual capture increasingly difficult, and perhaps impossible. But Tarzan refused to recognize the impossibility of his task. The jungle storm continued to mount in violence, but he kept on. For now, he was traveling in the upper level of the jungle district he knew best. The trees bent with the fury of the storm, the thunder rolled, and the lightning cracked. Then suddenly, as a great flash of lightning illuminated the belt, they saw each other. The jungle man in the upper level, and the man of the city far below. Tarzan could not make out his features from that distance. But the Tommy gun he held in the crook of his arm furnished ample identification. Tarzan grasped the swinging vine and hurled himself downward. But just then, the lightning flashed again. A huge limb was struck by the blinding flash and thundered down, striking through with all its weight. He crumbled and lay still. And as he lay there, unconscious, the man with the machine gun came toward him. Not dead, Tarzan? Uh, uh, who are you? Me, Makio of Punya tribe. You not member? Oh, yes, yes. Of course I remember you, but I... Confused. A limb struck me during the storm right here in my... Makio, you, you bandaged me? See you. I not put cloth on Tarzan's but head. He he couldn't have done it. He must have known I was hunting for him. Maybe it was the same man who saved Torgo. Someone saved Torgo from what? Torgo go out look for killer. Fall into water where Gimla swim. Torgo fell into a stream where crocodiles were? No deal. But white man shoot gun that speak many times. Save Torgo. That's fantastic. How, how tall was this white man? Like so high. 
It's about five eight, all right. Did he have blue eyes? Nidio. What color was his hair? Like leaves when dye. Brown hair, and he was young, wasn't he? Nidio, what's your man? Akil, this is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. A man kills everyone who crosses his path and halts his flight long enough to save a small native boy and binds my wounds when I'm the one closest on his heels. Well, not think he won kill great Warner. Well, the description tallies, and we know he's near here. I can't explain the strange twistings and turnings of his mind, but I, I do know that regardless of these few good things he's done, he's still a killer. And he must be caught. We get close to man we follow. Yes, Tarzan? He's just ahead. Perhaps when we round this great mound of rocks, we'll be able to... He only short distance way. And he's put the machine gun aside for a moment while he plays with a lion cub. It's incredible. What we do? We have to do our duty, even though it's obvious that there's good in this man, too. McKeel, you, you head back. Get word to Captain Lawrence that I'll meet him and his men at my seacoast cabin, that I'll have George Ross with me. McKeel, do as Tarzan say. Keep well, Lord of Jungle. And now to sneak up on him before he sees me and grasps that gun again. You're a cute little thing. I can't see why your mother deserted you. <laughs> Gosh, I hate to leave you here alone, too, but I have to keep on. They mustn't catch me. If they do, I'll be taken back to prison. You're virtually there now. You can't even reach for that gun. You killed your last man. You, you know about it. All of Africa knows. You may have spared my life last night, but I've got to turn you over to the authorities. Yes, I, I suppose you do. And jail's a bitter place. It's a little late to start thinking of that now. Yes, I guess it is. But I did what I had to do. You're, you're not even sorry? No, I'm not. All right, let's get going. I'm taking you to my seacoast cabin. The police will meet us there, and I'll turn you over to them. And, and you needn't think of escape. My knife moves quickly. Oh, could we take this lion cub along? It, it seems a shame to leave him here. He's so defenseless. He's able to fend for himself. And your sudden bursts of kindness do not impress me. You're a killer, and you'll get the same punishment that's meted out to other killers. Yes, that's the law. All right, I'm ready to go with you. That angry mob, they've come for me? That's right. But don't worry, Captain Lawrence is going to do everything in his power to hold them back. You'll be given a fair trial. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Nothing seems to matter anymore. Who is it? It's Lawrence. <laughs> ah, good work, Tarzan. All right, young man, put out your wrists. Do you have to put these handcuffs on me? I won't cause any trouble. He hasn't made any attempt to escape from me, Captain Lawrence. And he has some trick up his sleeve. Just put your wrists out. You're not getting away from me, Mr. George Ross. Ross! I'm not George Ross. I'm Harley Cartwright, Jr. What? The judge's son? I killed Ross two days ago. I've been trailing him ever since he killed my mother and my father, my kid sister and brother. I'd forgotten there was an elder son. The unidentified man, the one who was machine gunned beyond recognition. That, that must have been Ross. It was. If I'd gotten to him a day or two earlier, I, I could have saved some of the many killed. But why have you been carrying that machine gun? I had no other weapons to use against the jungle animals. I didn't stop to get a gun when I went after Ross. I guess I sort of lost my head. But you spoke about jail being a bitter place. What What do you know about jail? I spent a month there once. You see, I once violated a minor law, and my father committed me there as a lesson. But I never held it against him. He was right. But, Harley, why have you been running away? Because I came upon Ross when he was sleeping. I could have brought him back a prisoner, but I didn't. I kept remembering what he'd done. I picked up the gun, I pressed the trigger, and I, I couldn't let go of it. I kept firing and firing and firing. I know it was wrong to take the law into my own hands. I knew you'd be after me. But I couldn't help it. Harley, you, you did do wrong. And I know that Captain Lawrence will have to take you into custody. But outside that door is a crowd of people who, who loved your father. There are thousands like them all over Africa. I, I can't believe that a jury made up of these people will, will deal too harshly with you. We 
hope that you enjoyed our story and that you'll remain with us to hear a preview of our next story of Tarzan. The advertisement had been an eye-catching one. A contest was being held, and the winner would receive a free trip to Africa, a colorful tour through the Congo, exciting expeditions through the desert, and to exotic Egypt. The contest is won by a beautiful American girl who was unaware that the contest was designed just for her, and that the prize is death in a mysterious catacomb of an Egyptian pharaoh. Included in our cast were Jack Moyles, John Stevenson, Roland Morris, and Ted Von Elts. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Vassar. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, First Prize, Death, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> 